Now in context, go, secondary dominant, then to the two, longer than four. So here it is still functioning as a secondary dominant, but I'm playing it in first inversion. I could have played it in root position. Face. Today I'm going to show you one of the most powerful technique, reharmonization technique used in gospel music, in jazz, and even in popular music that you hear on the radio. And that's the concept of the secondary dominant. This simple concept can turn any song into a nice harmonic piece. Just one single concept. Today we're gonna dive deep into that, so stay tuned. Welcome back to another piano lesson with Warren. My name is Warren McPherson. This is the channel where you learn how to play gospel music by ear. You learn everything regarding to ear training, theory, reharmonization, chords with melody technique, all of that great stuff. So if you're new to the channel and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, you want to do so so you can be uh, stayed notified when we post new content. All right. Be sure to watch through to the end. The end, I'm going to have a little bonus round where I'm going to show you some additional things you can do with the technique I'm going to show you today. We are looking at secondary dominant, and I'm going to demonstrate that in the key of F major. And just a quick refresher for those who are not that familiar with the key of F, the F major is the one, G minor is the two, A minor is the three, B flat major is the four, C major is the five, D minor is the six, and E diminished is the seven. Those are the di diatonic chords for the key of F major. The song we're gonna to use today, or rather the hymn, is Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. This is a very popular hymn, and especially the chorus part of the song is often used as a benediction. So at the end of a service, end of a sermon, oftentimes pastors may raise this hymn. So it's definitely something good to have in your arsenal. Most people don't even know the entire hymn. I've gone for years without realizing that there were some more verses and things to this hymn because the chorus is generally sort of like the, the most popular part, um, which is the one that starts with turn your eyes up in Jesus. So we're just going to focus on that part today. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play the hymn in his sort of basic form, and then I'm going to show you how it sounds when you add secondary dominance to it. So here we go. Turn. That's the basic version of how you would play it, right? Not too bad. But now, check out secondary dominance being included. See if you can spot them. Do you struggle with these three crucial questions? What to practice, how to practice effectively, and when to move on to the next level? Without clear answers, progress is slow and frustrating. This is why I created PianoLessonWithWarren.com a structured program tailored for gospel pianists, guiding you from beginner to advance seamlessly. At every step, you'll know exactly what to practice, how to practice it, and when to advance. Join thousands of successful students worldwide who have achieved their musical goals with my proven method. Visit PianoListenWithWarren.com and start your seven-day free trial today.
hear how differently that sounds with the use of secondary dominants. So if you've been asking, what are secondary dominants? Let's do a little quick recap. A dominant seven chord, if I'm in the key of F, right? When I go to my five chord, if I turn it into a seven by introducing the B flat, we call that a regular dominant seven chord. And in any major key, the five is the only place you can go and build a, what we call a diatonic dominant seven chord. The reason why we call it diatonic is because all the notes of the chord can be found in the F major scale. The minute you build a dominant seven chord and it introduces notes outside of the scale that you're playing in, the key, that is called a secondary dominant. So if I go back to my F and I play a dominant seven chord with F, now we're playing a secondary dominant. The F chord is functioning as a secondary dominant. Note, it is still a dominant seven chord. Nothing has changed about the quality of a dominant seven chord. The way it's functioning now theoretically within the song is called a secondary dominant. Another thing to note about secondary dominant is that the primary function of the secondary dominant wants to resolve the chord upwards a fourth, up a perfect fourth, right? So an interval from F to B flat's a perfect fourth. So when I play that F7, the natural place for it to go is to B flat. When I play a C7, the natural place for it to resolve is F, because C is a perfect fourth from F. If I play a D7 in the key of F, now this D7 is functioning as a secondary dominant, and it wants to resolve up a fourth to G minor. So in a nutshell, that is the function of secondary dominant chords. Now I'm going to link to a video at the end of this video that dives deeper into sort of the makeup and the theory behind secondary dominant. So be sure to stick around so you can click on that. So that's the general function of a dominant seven chord. So now I'm gonna show you how I use these in this particular hymn. So the beginning of the song goes, Turn your eyes. Now, this is one of the first place I can throw a dominant seven chord. Before going to this A minor seven, I can put a dominant seventh chord before it. Now, how would I know what chord would function as a dominant seven that resolves to this A? Remember I said earlier, dominant seven chord wants to resolve up a fourth. So if A is our destination chord, all I have to do is find a chord a fourth below A, and I get to E. So I know I can build a dominant seven on E, and it will resolve nicely to A minor. So then we go, turn your eyes. So you see I throw in this E seven. Now I, I'm still holding the A because it's the melody note. So I still hold it over this, this A. And it gives you a nice 11th chord. So now, let's do it in context again. Turn your eyes. And that's the first place I can use a dominant seven. It's important to know that when you're using dominant seventh chord, you're interjecting more chords into the song which means you have to be mindful of how you're counting. Before I was counting one, two, three, one, two, three. So I was counting three beats for F and then going to my A. Because I'm introducing now a new chord before I get to the A, I have to limit the amount of count I'm gonna to assign to the F. So in this case, I'm doing two counts for F, one count for the E7, so I still maintain my three beat measure. So that's just an, uh, another thing to keep in mind when you're adding passing chords, you're adding more chords to the song. So you have to then shorten the length of time you've been holding certain chords for. So everything still adds up at the end, right? So here we go. Turn your, there we go. Your eyes upon G. So when I go to my B 
B-flat and I resolve it to this one in first inversion, then I'm going to add, turn down my F chord into a dominant seven because I know it was, was, it's going to B-flat, which is where I want it to go anywhere. As, anyways, so now in context, turn your eyes upon Jesus. See the setup nicely. So I use two secondary dominant chords there. Before I get to my G minor, when we go, look for and there's one, right? So before we get to this uh, G minor, I throw in a secondary dominant. In this case, I play that. And you might say, Warren, well, why are you playing it as an augmented chord? It's an augmented seven, right? That's because the B flat is the melody. That's where the melody is. And that's another thing I like to do. I like to introduce the melody note at that particular time in the chord because it oftentimes makes the chord sound interesting. Because if I didn't, and I just play this dominant seven, now we have the melody up here and me playing the A. Mm, that would be bad reharm voicing right there. So to make sure that the melody aligns with the chord, we play this B flat. And that's just another thing to keep note of. Melody's always king. So when you're making reharmonization changes, you gotta make sure that the melody is included in those chord voicing and chord alteration. Now in context, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for in his. There we go. Secondary dominant, then to the two. So here it is still functioning as a secondary dominant, but I'm playing it in first inversion. I could have played it in root position, face. but I wanted to add additional momentum to the song, seeing that I'm already on the root. I said, what if I move up to the third of the chord and keep the melody here, and then that gives me a nice, and you can put this root chord wherever you want. Sometimes I even play it without the root. But the function of it is still secondary dominant. Face. Now, and the things that stay on this minor. Now here I'm getting into something a little ahead of myself. Now I'm setting this up as a 2-5 passing. And I'll cover that more in detail in other videos. But now I'm taking my C major, which is supposed to be the five, and I'm making it minor because I'm setting it up before that dominant seven. And the things of earth. Now here my secondary dominant. We'll go strangely dim. This is not a secondary dominant, but rather a reharm. This is a reharm. Instead of staying on the four, I reharmonize the four by going up to the flat seven. And this is a different kind of topic in reharmonization. We'll cover that in future videos, but I just wanted to show you what I'm doing here. This is another form of reharm. In the light of his now here's a secondary dominant. time slowly. Secondary dominant. Secondary dominant left again. Secondary dominant. Secondary dominant. Secondary dominant. Secondary dominant. Secondary.
Dirty Mama. Uh, five. Now there's a lot more I can do with the song. That's why you see me intentionally trying not to go overboard because I wanted this video to be surrounded or to just be focused on the secondary dominant concept. So if you can remember what I played initially when I opened the video, the basic version, and now how I transformed it, and 90% of the chord concept that I added to the song is based on the concept, the theoretical concept of secondary dominant. It is one of the most powerful theoretical technique used in all genres of music. So it is something I highly encourage you to start exploring and experimenting with, right? Now, I promised you that there was going to be a bonus. I'm going to show you some additional things for my more advanced folks that you can do. Some runs, you know, some additional chord changes. Also, everything that we talked and covered about in this video, I have created a PDF based on this video. It's like a summary PDF with all the important points, some screenshots and stuff. You can download that PDF down below for free. So be sure to check that out, okay? Now, let's run a little bit wild with this. I'm gonna show you more things that you can do with it. So. All right, let's show you what I was doing there. The first are the scales. What, what are those? So when I get to this C minor, when I go. When I turn to C minor. What is this? So all I'm thinking right now is F major scale starting on C including this E flat. So if I take F major, but instead of playing the E natural, I play an E flat. That's all I'm thinking. But I'm starting to scale on C. Why? Because I want a C minor. Now, if you want to add a more technical name for this scale, it is the mixolydian, F mixolydian. It's the fifth mode of the major scale. So it's the fifth mode of B flat major. So another way of thinking of this is B flat major starting on the five or C Dorian starting on, on the C, right? So you can think about it multiple ways. And it works because it encompasses all the notes of the C minor that I'm playing. The same scale also works with the F7. So that's why I could run the same scale ascending and then when I switch to the F7, I could descend with the same scale. So on the things of earth will go strangely dim. Now when we get to this flat seven, I could play the literal same scale. That same Dorian scale. And then I'm just playing right here. It's like a it's like, it's like a, a G diminished, but I have the E flat in the bass. Or we can think of it as like an F7. 
no, no, no. Did I say E flat? I'm sorry. The D flat in the bass. So it's like a G um, minor seven flat five with a D flat in the bass. It's a reharm chord, right? Because I'm doing in the light that resolves the discord. Of his glory and grace. And I think I did some additional things here uh, when I go and the things of earth mm. will go strange. So right here, this chord right here that I'm playing, this altered B chord, this is what we call a tritone substitution. A different type of passing chord reharm technique that we'll cover in future videos, but that resolves the B flat. You know, so when the things of earth will go strangely dim. Now, sometimes I like to go to this E flat, then jump up to the A flat. And again, these are just reharm technique based on experience. Then I go back to my G diminish. His glory and grace. One more thing I'm going to show you that I forgot to mention. And when I go, and your eyes upon Jesus, look for His wonderful face. Right here, I throw in a secondary dominant. And the things I go into A7 to get into D minor. And the I do a minor chromatic passing going down to C minor, then the tritone sub will go strangely dim. Then in the light of his glory and grace. That's sort of a rough and dirty idea <laughs> as to how you can take it advanced. I just wanted to tack on those little things for my more advanced folks, right? But again, just to remind you, the download of everything discussed in this video. I've created a PDF based on everything discussed in this video for those who kind of like to have a summary version in text form. You can download that down below for free. Now, for those of you who've been watching for a while, know that PNLS with Warren is actually an online membership program that goes deeper in teaching gospel piano by ear. And so if that's something that interests you, if you need more structure, guidance, and materials that goes deeper, plus access directly to me on a daily basis, then I would highly recommend you check out pianolessonwithwarren.com, which is our membership program I have served over 12,000 students in the past nine years, eight years since I've been running this program. We currently have about 615 uh, members in the program from all over the world. It's a great place to be. And there's lots of resources and tools that you'll get access to that is not available on uh, YouTube. We're currently running a seven day trial. So if you want to test it out for seven days unfettered with unfettered access to everything to see if it's something right for you, head over there and let me know what you think. All right. And check out this video right here. That's going to talk a little bit more on secondary dominant with, and some passing chord technique if that interests you. All right. Until then, have a blessed week and we'll talk soon.